Well, the, the research in my lab focuses on the role of connective tissue in chronic pain. And we're also interested in the mechanisms and how connective tissue plays a role in the mechanisms of acupuncture and manual and movement-based therapies, for example, yoga and massage. And I actually got interested in this because of my interest in acupuncture. That goes back to 1990s. I was uh, studying acupuncture and became very interested in the mechanical interactions between the needle and the tissues. And there was no really knowledge of what that was was at the time and we found that it was actually the needle that was interacting with the connective tissues and that was ended up being a very important thing. Connective tissue is a very important part of the body. It is the what connects everything to everything else. That's why it's called connective tissue. It's all over the body. It forms this sort of web and sort of network throughout the body. It surrounds all the muscles and the nerves and the blood vessels and it even goes inside of organs. And so it's a part of the body that really is a, is a whole system that also interacts with all the other systems of the body and interacts with the, the nervous system, the immune system, uh, the circulation system and so it really almost like a whole body integrator I would say and we're very interested in understanding more about connective tissue itself how it functions in health and also what happens to it in disease very interested in what happens to connective tissue in especially in chronic pain chronic musculoskeletal pain in particular So fibroblasts are the cells that manufacture the connective tissue. They, they are all over the connective tissue and they make what's called the extracellular matrix, which is all the proteins. Uh, connective tissue is only about 20% cells. The rest of it, 80% of it, is what we call extracellular. And those are proteins that actually create the how connective tissue has its toughness. Connective tissue is actually pretty strong. You can stretch it, but it, it really kind of gives, and but it, doesn't, it, it really doesn't rip very easily. You can put a lot of load on it. And this is mainly because of the collagen and other types of proteins that make up this tissue. And the fiber Fibroblasts are kind of in charge of controlling the amount of collagen that and how the co collagen gets secreted uh, and in the composition of the connective tissue. They're very important cells. In the lab, we're also interested in how the fibroblasts respond to when the tissue is stretched. What we found is these fibroblasts are not just passively sitting there. They respond, they change shape, they expand greatly when you stretch the tissue even a little bit. The fibroblasts expand, like we say, they form like big flat pancakes. And we are still not quite understand exactly why they do that. But at the same time that they expand, they, they, they release molecules uh, into the tissues, including ATP, which we think may play a role in uh, some kind of signaling inside the tissue. So connective tissue is very important for any type of inflammatory response. When there's acute inflammation, for example, if you just cut yourself and you have a, like a, a little in, infection somewhere, the connective tissue is where the battle takes place for actually getting rid of the problem. And so if it's a cut, for example, then the fibroblasts start releasing substances to attract inflammatory cells to actually heal the wound. And there's a program that is set in place right at the beginning, this is called, this is called acute inflammation. But right at the beginning of acute inflammation, there's actually a program that sets in motion to re resolve the inflammation, to actually terminate it. And so after about two or three days, the redness, the swelling, whatever, diminishes and the wound heals. But there are circumstances where this doesn't happen and inflammation becomes chronic. And the inflammatory cells remain in the tissue and they, they're more in chronic inflammations, inflammatory cells. And at the same time that that happens, the fibroblast starts secreting more and more and more collagen. And so what can happen is that the tissue, it's almost like it becomes a wound that just doesn't heal. and it becomes fibrotic. What that means is that it becomes stiffer and you can have chronic inflammatory conditions, for example, a disease called scleroderma, where you have chronic inflammation and, and gradually the tissue becomes stiffer and stiffer to the point where it becomes very difficult to move. So what we have found in the lab is that response that I was referring to earlier where the fibroblast change shape in response to the tissue being stretched, the same thing happens when an acupuncture needle is inserted. 
What happens is that when the acupuncture needle is inserted into the connective tissue, it's not usually during a treatment, it's not just inserted, it's actually manipulated. The needle is twisted or uh, manipulated up and down and what that does is that it actually pulls on the tissue and it, it stretches the tissue kind of like from the inside. And the fibroblasts that are in that tissue, uh, they respond, they feel that and then they change shape just the same way that the cell fibroblast changes when the tissue is stretched. What we are studying now is what is the role of these fibroblasts in the in, in a case, for example, where there is some inflammation. What you were talking about where people have uh, chronic musculoskeletal pain, for example, there are instances where there is chronic inflammation in the tissue, but we don't really fully understand the relationship between tissue inflammation and chronic pain. There's still a lot of things that we don't know about, about that. What we have found, however, is that when patients have, for example, chronic low back pain, uh, we do ultrasound studies on their backs and we see that the connective tissue has gotten thicker and less mobile. It looks like there's something going on in there. It could be chronic inflammation and fibrosis, but we don't know for sure because we haven't actually done biopsies. It's difficult to actually do a biopsy of somebody's back. You know, you don't want to do that because it would actually hurt the person. So right now, our studies are limited to uh, imaging studies. We have done some ultrasound studies based on uh, human subjects, live subjects, and comparing them to cadaver images, slices through the arm of someone, and comparing that to uh, anatomical line marks on a, on a live human. And there seems to be a greater occurrence of acupuncture meridians where there's, for example, between two muscles. And, that's actually what happens, you know, if you read the descriptions in the acupuncture textbooks, they will tell you a lot of the meridians are located, for example, in a groove separating a muscle with a, with a bone or separating two muscles, and that's where connective tissue is. So it's, it's not really surprising that we found a greater likelihood of acupuncture meridians being located along connective tissue planes between two muscles. There may be a, a reason why these meridians were placed where they were because when you insert the needle along these meridians or at these acupuncture points, the, the, the likelihood of your needle actually getting deeper into connective tissue is greater at those places. Inflammation normally turns itself off, but in the case where it doesn't, if you have a chronic inflammatory situation, could you use therapies that uh, like acupuncture, like stretching, like massage, like yoga, for example, to help heal the tissues. So I think that is a very important focus. That's a very important focus of our lab right now. In terms of how this can be integrated between the, uh, for example, the acupuncture practice and uh, conventional medicine, we think this is extremely important. That's what really integrative medicine is all about. It's about understanding these treatments just as well and, and as rigorously study them scientifically as we do any other kind of conventional medicine so that eventually if we understand exactly what happens scientifically then then the it just becomes one medicine really it's, it's whatever it is that 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 we do should all make sense physiologically so we are really working towards that is, is really an integration of these different ways of viewing the body I think one of the things that's really interesting about a therapy like acupuncture is it, it kind of gives us a different window of opportunity to look at the body in a different way and it helps us to generate interesting scientific hypotheses that we normally wouldn't have thought about if we had to only be looking at conventional treatments so it's a source of inspiration for us in the lab and it, it really makes us think a little bit outside the box.